What is up guys? This is Prithi Raj here. Hope you guys are doing great. We are pretty much at the end of the year. So we have some interesting stuff that we want to share with you guys before we end this year and we move on to 2021, which is the new Intel 11 generation stuff. Now Acer announced their new laptop here in the heart of Malaysia and we have two particular laptops in the house and we're going to talk about one of them in this video, which is the Swift 3X. Now the Swift 3X is the one of the three laptops available all over the world that has an Intel Iris XE Max and which is what we're going to talk about in this video and let's not waste any time and get right into it and you're watching The Adventures of Esper. Let's begin. <laughs> Now, here is the Acer Swift 3X. We're not going to talk about pretty much the design or the keyboard or pretty much the trackpad and whatsoever because I'm sure you can actually read that in the full review which is linked down in the description below. But what we're going to talk about here in this video is definitely the specification that's paired under the hood, which is the processor and mainly we're going to talk about the Intel Iris Xe Max, which is a dedicated discrete GPU that we are literally getting from Intel for the very first time on a Windows laptop. Now, discrete GPUs have been in the market for quite some time. In fact, Nvidia has been doing them for a longest period of time. We have seen them making some of the amazing discrete GPUs in thin and light laptops because they offer really good performance for the profile of laptops that exist in the thin and light realm. But that's all it does because if you need, really need more power, you're obviously going to resort to something that's more capable to do so. But Thin and Light offers one thing is that the name itself holds the fact that you can pretty much bring it everywhere and anywhere. And during my time last year when I went to Computex, having a Thin and Light helped me a lot because I was still able to do some editing job thanks to the discrete GPU that's found under the hood. Now, this time around, Intel has jumped into the discrete GPU game and they have unveiled their very own discrete GPU which is the Iris XE Max. The Iris XE which was announced back in September 2020 was a integrated GPU that you would find alongside with the processor. So don't get confused with the Iris XE and the Iris XE Max because the Iris XE Max on the other hand was announced on November 2020 which is a separate entity on its own. So you have the CPU, the integrated GPU in that particular one and this is the discrete GPU so this particularly exists on its own just like how the Nvidia MX GPU exists all on its own alongside with the processor and the Intel UHD graphics that we have seen in the past. Both the Iris XE which is based on the processor by the way and also the Iris XE Max has gone through the same 10 nanometer super fin process. Now, the thing is that the memory on the Intel Iris XE is shared with the RAM itself, but with the discrete GPU, you get a dedicated memory, which comes with four gigs. That's gonna be based on a PCIe Gen 4 slot. That is amazing because now 11 generation supports PCIe Gen 4 and speeds are phenomenal. Now, we're gonna talk about the second thing that's found in this particular processor, which is DeepLink. Now, DeepLink is a very interesting technology where it does memory sharing based on artificial intelligence. Now, what it does is that it actually load balances the integrated and the discrete GPU by increasing the performance and also giving better battery life. And that's the whole idea behind the DeepLink. Now, say for instance, if you're using a graphics demanding application and say if your processor has peaked in its performance, it will actually use the GPU, the integrated GPU, and also the discrete GPU, share the memory across to increase the performance so that you get a better output. Now, this is something that you would really find useful, especially if you're planning to do some procreation, especially on the move, because you would really need the power then and there. The good thing is that this is an AI based, so we can't really be certain on when exactly we can turn it on manually or not. So it's basically based on the workload that you're gonna put it against. Now, this all aside, now we're gonna talk about the Acer Swift 3X. Now the Acer Swift 3X is one of the thin and light laptop from Acer themselves. And as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the three laptops in the world as of right now that has the Intel Iris Xe Max. Now, what does that mean? Um, how exactly is the thermal gonna be? How is the performance? And say if I wanna game on it, can I even game on it? Which is what we're gonna answer here right now. Let's just start off with the first 
thin. Is it still thin and light? Now, honestly speaking, the Acer Swift series has always been uh, or has always focused on the thinness and the lightness of the laptop. Now, the Acer Swift 3X is slightly thicker. So you do have a thicker profile because when you have a discrete GPU, you just have to make sure that you have better thermal performance because you don't want your laptop to get overheated, especially on the go. And it's a really huge issue that nobody should face, especially when they're working on the go as well. And when there is a lot of thermal uh, issue, you're going to face a long term issue with the laptop itself, which is why Acer have actually included a really interesting thermal solution on this particular laptop. Because if you were to open up the laptop, you will see there are thermal vents on the top and at the back, you will notice them as well, which is interesting for a Swift 3X. That's number one. Now, number two, how exactly the performance is going to be. We have actually talked about the 1165 G7 processor and compared with a 10th generation, which is the 1065 G7 in another video. So if you want to watch that video, you can actually click up right here and you can watch that or you can head over to the link down in the description below. Now, the GPU performance on this particular laptop is what that matters the most. So in order to do that particular test, we actually did our usual 3D Mark Blender and also at the very same time, we performed a PC Mark and Cinebench R20. So these are the four essential core benchmarks that we decided to try on this particular machine to actually see how the performance is. And you can see the benchmark scores. It's much more better than the 10th generation. And just like the 1165 G7 comparison that we did about a few weeks back, it's pretty much the same result that we see right here. Intel UHD graphics is pretty much gone for good and the Iris XE Max is here to stay and I'm really happy that we finally have an interesting contender in the whole lineup. Now, synthetic benchmark can only go as far as possible because they don't really give the real life experience. So why not fire up some games and try it out, right? So what we decided to do is we decided to play some Fall Guy. Um, we also took um, Monster Hunter, which is also a graphics intensive game. Monster Hunter World was impressive. You have to make sure that you tone down the graphics to low and it's still playable at best. And honestly speaking, the gaming, back in the day, if you were to use an Intel UHD graphics, you could not have possibly imagined that you can actually game on a thin and a laptop. Now, that particular chance is here because with the Iris XE Max, there is a little bit of gaming room for there. So even when you go into the settings, when you try to toggle it, Monster Hunter manages the memory really well and it actually lets you know that you only have 4 gigs of VRAM so it will only take about half which is about 1.5 to 2 um, and it makes sure that it allocates the memory accordingly so your performance doesn't get a huge hit. So make sure to tone down the settings as much as possible. Then finally, because we are pretty much stuck at home and every single one of us are playing multiplayer games so much so to a point that we just stay connected in the virtual world, we drew Fall Guys. Now Fall Guys is an interesting title that if you haven't checked out already, you should check it out. So the link is down in the description below. We tried the game. The game was pretty much easy to play and it was fun to play on the machine as well. Now during trying any of these kind of games uh, on this particular machine, Monster Hunter was the one that really took a hit in the thermal because it really shot up pretty much high. Whereas playing Fall Guys and pretty much playing all the other games that requires very minimal graphics attention or very minimal demand in the graphics department kind of shows that that game are easier to play. But for what it's worth, if you were to use or if you were to play older titles like Devil May Cry, which is the DMC by the way, the laptop is able to handle that pretty much well in my opinion and you can actually try some of the games as well on this particular machine and all the titles are pretty solid even we tried grid 2 on this particular laptop it was pretty fun to play so yeah that's basically it so this is something that we really wanted to talk about because now intel is definitely entering into this game pretty much hard and strong knowing that the 10th generation processor and we were really disappointed by that because Team Red literally swooped in and took all the market shares and also took a lot of attention. But with that said, 11th generation processor is definitely better. And number two, the Iris XE Max is going to give you the best performance that you can ask from a discrete GPU on a laptop. And this means the competition is going to get fierce, especially with Team Green and Team Blue in the discrete GPU. 
So that's all you need to know about the Iris XE Max. Now, if you want to learn more about this particular laptop, you can actually head over to the link down in the description below. Now, that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Huge thanks to Acer Malaysia for making this video happen. Until then, this is Pretty Rat signing off. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.